What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Nancy Pelosi is unloading 2,900, almost 3,000 Apple shares right before a particular event. Now, is this considered insider trading? Now, President Biden is preparing to target Americans' gas furnaces. So first they're trying to come after our gas cars. Now they're trying to come after our uh, gas furnaces, our gas stoves. What's next? Advocates are calling for abolishing the stand your ground laws and Apple's absurd price tag for their Vision Pro. And for those of you guys who are not familiar, the Vision Pro is Apple's 3D. Basically, it's their first 3D camera. And uh, yeah, the price tag is kind of kind of up there. Millionaires are favoring <clears throat> millionaires are favoring Ron DeSantis in Republican presidential primary. We're going to dive into these stories and more later in this video. But first, if you guys are new here, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. And while you guys are at it, go ahead and smash that like button. I would totally, totally appreciate that. So President Biden is preparing to target Americans gas furnaces. Can you believe can you believe this? So the Biden administration is expected to soon finalize regulations restricting which home gas furnaces or which home gas powered furnaces consumers are able to purchase in the future. Now, according to the experts, the regulations proposed in June 2022 by the Department of Energy, the DOE would restrict consumer choice drive prices higher and likely have a low impact on greenhouse gas emissions. Now, we've seen this before. The government tries to step in and basically direct Americans purchases. And all it does is make it more expensive for us. It makes it makes it, it puts us in a situation where uh, essentially it incentivizes throwing away perfectly good working appliances just to get some energy credit and then you get some new stuff in and it's not even built as well as the old stuff that you had which would probably have lasted you a good 20 to 30 years but i digress so anyway the agency could finalize the rules targeting residential gas furnaces which more than 50 percent of american households are currently relying on for space heating at any point over the upcoming weeks Quote, this is a classic example of one size not fitting all, end quote. According to Ben Lieberman, a senior fellow of the Competitive Enterprise Institute, he went on to say, quote, every home is different. Every homeowner is different and, and people are best off having a wide range of choices. They can work with their own contractor to make the best decision for their home and their circumstances. And I'm totally on board with that. Why would we want the government stepping in trying to make decisions for us? It's bad enough they're trying to tell us what to eat, uh, what to drive, how to heat our homes, how to cook our food. To be honest with you, <clears throat> I've cooked on electric stoves, and I don't really like cooking on electric stoves. I think that the food comes out much better with a gas stove, and I don't know if anyone in my family or even you know distant relatives, friends, and whatnot who has ever been hurt or harmed in any way whatsoever through use of a gas stove. So I'm not on board with that argument. <clears throat> now, a nuclear attack would most likely target one of these six U.S. cities. Yeah, so a nuclear attack on U.S. soil, it would most likely hit one of these six cities, New York, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, or, drum roll please, Washington, D.C., but a, but a public health expert says that any of these cities would struggle to provide emergency services to the wounded. The cities also no longer have designated fallout shelters to protect people from radiation. Well, hope hope that these uh hope that the people in these areas, if they are ever affected by a nuclear event, hopefully uh you know the uh, residents there have their own built-in uh, I should say underground bunkers. Now, a nuclear attack in a large metro metropolitan area is one of the 15 disaster scenarios for which the United States Federal Emergency Management Agency, also known as FEMA, has an emergency strategy for. And the agency's plan involves deploying first responders, providing immediate shelter for evacuees, and decontaminating victims who have been exposed to radiation. For everyday citizens, FEMA has some simple advice. Get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. Uh, I would imagine it would be better to stay underground, uh, just my thoughts on that. Uh, but according to Erwin Redlinger, 
a public health expert at Columbia University who specializes in disaster preparedness, these federal guidelines are not enough to prepare a city for a nuclear attack. And I would have to agree. I mean, I, I can't imagine the chaos that would ensue if a nuclear attack were to hit any metropolitan city, let alone the six that I mentioned. Quote, there isn't a single jurisdiction in America that has anything approaching an adequate plan to deal with a nuclear detonation, end quote. So basically what he's saying is that nobody here in America is ready for a nuclear event. That is extremely concerning. We are just sitting ducks, very vulnerable at this point, according to him. And so this includes the six urban areas that Red Redliner uh, thinks are the most likely targets of a nuclear attack. New York, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. These cities are not only some of the largest and densest cities in the country, but also home to critical infrastructure like energy plants, financial hubs, government facilities, and wireless transmission systems that are vital to U.S. security. So do you feel a little bit more safe today than you did, I don't know, before the start of this video? Drop me some comments down below. And also let me know if you guys, have you made any plans yourself in the event that there is a nuclear event here in the United States? Like, do you have an emergency plan for you and your family? And if so, share what your strategies are with 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 us uh, here in the community. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to know about your strategies. So Nancy Pelosi unloads 2,900 Apple shares right before WW. Uh, WWDC. Now, what is WWDC? This is the Worldwide Developers Conference. So basically, the former Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, she disclosed a stock transaction of shares of Apple shares traded on the NASDAQ, ticker symbol AAPL. And the disclosure comes shortly after the technology giant shared details of the new products and updates of at its Worldwide Developments Conference. In a filing released on Wednesday, Nancy Pelosi and her husband, Paul Pelosi, disclosed a transaction of 2,900 shares of Apple valued somewhere between $500,000 and $1 and a million dollars. And so rather than this transaction being a sale or a purchase of Apple stock, it was instead a donation to uh, a donation of shares to a college. Now, under the description, the text reads contribution of 2,900 shares per held personally to Trinity College. So, OK, uh, is this insider trading it? I mean, based on my understanding of what insider trading is, I wouldn't say that this is. Um, but you guys be the judge. Hit me up in the comment section down below. Let me know if you guys are on board with this. Is this insider trading to you? What do you guys think? <clears throat> now, millionaires are favoring Ron DeSantis in Republican presidential primary. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Uh, but apparently he's speaking to the affluent community quite well, as he's got quite a bit of support. Support for Governor Ron DeSantis among GOP millionaires is falling while more wealthy Republicans are backing former President Donald Trump, according to uh, a recent survey. DeSantis remains the favorite for 2024 Republican uh, presidential nominations among GOP millionaires. And the result is a potential indicator of support among wealthy Republican political donors. Yeah, uh, deep state behind him. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is the favorite Republican candidate among millionaires. Only 32 percent of millionaire Republicans now support DeSantis as the GOP nominee, according to a survey which polls individuals with $1 million or more in investable assets. And so this marks a large drop from the 54% who backed DeSantis at the end of 2022. But at the same time, more respondents are getting uh, behind former President Donald Trump. And he has the support of 28% of Republican millionaires narrowly trailing Ron DeSantis. The share of Republican millionaires backing Donald Trump jumped from 17% at the end of 2022. But Ron DeSantis fares a little bit better among millionaire independent voters than Trump does at at 20 percent, excuse me, as 20 percent favor DeSantis and only 7 percent back Trump. Now, <clears throat> what about you guys? I know we got some millionaires in the audience and we also have non millionaires in the audience. Who would you favor? 
would you get behind Ron DeSantis more so than Trump? Or would you get behind Trump and probably just uh, pass on DeSantis? Let me know what you guys uh, think in the comment section down below. They go on to say, yet millionaires expect Trump to win the GOP primary in 2024. Wow. When asked who they think will be the who, when asked who they think will be the Republican presidential nominee, forty nine percent said Trump, compared to twenty eight percent saying DeSantis. Well, there you go, guys. That is your update on that one. Now, advocates are calling for abolishing stand your ground laws after, and I apologize for this name that I'm going to butcher here, Ajiki Owens' death. Police made an arrest on Tuesday in the fatal shooting of Ajiki A.J. Owens, a mother of four who died in front of her 10-year-old child in Ocala, Florida. Awful. Susan Lorinks, 58 years old, was arrested on manslaughter and assault charges in Owens' death, which sparked outrage and brought renewed attention to Florida's controversial Stand Your Ground law. Owens family has been calling for an arrest since Owens was shot and killed through Lawrence's closed door on Friday. Tonight, tonight was a pivotal moment, according to Pamela Diaz, Owens' mother, adding that she is thankful for the community leaders for helping them reach this victory. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't even know what to say about that. I wouldn't even call that a victory, but, you know, my condolences, my thoughts and prayers go out to the all all of the family members and friends that were left behind, especially the four children. Here's an interesting one. My husband and I don't live together. And for some reason, they believe that this is the secret to the success of their relationship. How many of you guys are married out there? How many of you guys are in a relationship, just boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever? Would you ever think about living separately i mean now if your boyfriend and girlfriend chances are you are already living separately and maybe you're shacking up who cares i'm not here to judge i mean heck we shacked up um but what do you think about living together versus living separately in a relationship um that just seems really really oddball to me um i can't imagine living in a separate house from my wife um would it make things better? I don't see how that would make things better personally. You'd also have twice the expenses because you wouldn't be able to consolidate expenses by living in the same house. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> so it's a 7 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. And I'm sitting on the New York City subway, uh, one train in sunglasses, sweatpants, and some platform heels. For a moment, I time travel back to the college age version version of myself doing the walk of shame. And I hope and I hope that is not a thing that college age girls worry about anymore. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Moving on. Um, this couple here, Bianca and Peter Turetsky, are evidently married and choosing to live apart. Now, this is clearly not a traditional uh, relationship setup, right? Um, but they're saying after weathering the stress of the pandemic together as a family and still keeping our sense of humor, we decided that we wanted to be together for the rest of our lives. We got engaged. There are a lot of personal and intrusive questions that everyone asks when you're getting married. When are you going to what are you going to do with your apartment when are you moving in together? Are you having kids? Blah, 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 right? So um, basically, she's saying that they didn't really have answers to those questions. Long and short of it, they decided to get married and continue to live separately. I think that's just really, really weird. I, I, I'm not on board with that idea, but you know, I'm open to hearing what you guys' thoughts are. And heck, maybe you guys, maybe you guys will enlighten me. Maybe there is something magical about living apart, but... Um, that might only work for people who are married to other people who are in marriages that hate their spouse. Cause I know a lot of people who are married and they literally hate the other person. So maybe living in a separate house would be better. But then if that's the case, then why even be married? I don't even understand that. So Apple's absurd price tag for the vision pro is part of a brilliant and proven strategy. So Apple's vision pro costs almost, 
I should have asked this at the beginning of the video. How much do you guys think that the Apple uh, Vision Pro cost? Now, for those of you guys who don't know what the Apple Vision Pro is, it's basically a 3D camera. And it actually looks pretty cool. I was actually checking it out on their website. Um, any guesses? Any guesses on the price? So the Apple Vision Pro costs almost $4,000 after tax. That is a hefty price tag. I don't know whose kids are going to be asking for this and actually getting it for Christmas. Um, yeah, so given this, you know, given the device, giving the device a hefty price tag is actually a smart strategy. Some are saying the high cost helps maximize the profits, protects the brand and also funds future innovation. OK, uh, really can't argue with any of that. Certainly puts it out of reach from the average person. Um, but yeah, so uh, it seems like people have decided the two biggest flaws with Apple Vision's, uh, excuse me, Apple's Vision Pro face computer are you look kind of like an idiot when you wear it. Um, and then someone else is saying that it's extremely expensive, anywhere from thirty four hundred, almost thirty five hundred dollars or about four thousand dollars after tax. Yeah, that is definitely a bit of a chunky price tag uh, for such a gadget. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think about that? Um, I think that this is probably going to be geared toward, from what I'm seeing, it looks like it's geared toward like maybe older kids, like 13, 13 and up, um, certainly younger adults. Um I'm going to see if I can visit an Apple store and test this thing out before parting with that kind of cash. Um, but it definitely looks really, really cool. Let me know if you guys have heard of this Apple uh, Vision Pro uh, device, 3D camera. Like I said, it does look pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So <sighs> we talked about, we talked about a lot today. We talked about uh, President Biden's administration coming after our gas stoves, coming after our furnaces now. Uh, Nancy Pelosi unloading 2,900 Apple shares right before uh, the WDC. Uh, and of course, millionaires favoring Ron DeSantis in the Republican primary. Drop me some comments down below. What was the most interesting story we talked about today? And also hit me up in the comment section down below. Let me know what you want me to talk about on future videos. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you made it this far in this video, definitely drop a like for the video. Also share this video with everyone you know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one.